understanding the Earth's structure. The Earth's structure consists of three parts. The crust, the mantle and the core. The structure is similar to that of an egg. Its crust is like the shell, its mantle is like the egg white and the core is like the yolk. The crust is found beneath mountain ranges and oceans. Its thickness ranges from 40 kilometers under mountains and only 8 kilometers under oceans. Part of the Earth's mantle is made up of rocks so hot that it is liquid or molten. The mantle is measured at 2,900 kilometers of thickness. This molten rock seeps through cracks in the crust and pours out of volcanoes in the form of lava. When the lava cools down, it turns to rocks and stones. The Earth's core is mostly made up of iron. The core is divided into two parts, the inner core and the outer core. Scientists strongly feel that the inner core is solid while the outer core is in a liquid state. An estimate of the core's temperature ranges from 4000 to 6000 degrees Celsius. Scientists understand the composition of the Earth better by studying seismic waves. Seismic waves are vibrations that spread out from the epicenter of earthquakes. Continents of the world Continents are very large landmasses found on Earth. The Earth has seven such continents, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. Asia is the world's largest and most populous continent. It covers 30% of the Earth's landmass and hosts 60% of the world's current human population. Asia, along with Europe, form the world's largest landmass, Eurasia, divided by the Ural Mountains. By water, it is bounded on three sides by the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean and Arctic Ocean. Africa is the second largest and also the second most populated continent in the world. The continent of Africa covers 20.4% of the world's total land area and accounts for 14.72% of the world's human population. It is surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean and the Red Sea. Africa is widely regarded to be the continent where humans originated. It is located on the equator and experiences a number of climatic changes. North America is the third largest continent. It occupies 16.5% of the world's land mass and homes 7.8% of the world's population. It is surrounded by four water bodies, the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. South America is the fourth largest continent in terms of area. It is also the fifth most populous continent. It is bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean and to the north and east by the Atlantic Ocean. South America is home to the world's highest waterfall, the largest river by volume, the longest mountain range and many other geographical wonders. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent in the area. About 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice that averages about 1.6 kilometers in thickness. It is the coldest, driest and windiest continent. Antarctica is considered a desert with only 8 inches of rainfall in a year. People live here only for research purpose. Temperatures in Antarctica can drop to as low as minus 89 degrees Celsius. It is home to a variety of penguin species. Europe, by convention, is one of the world's seven continents divided from Asia by the Ural Mountains. It covers about 6.8% of the Earth's surface area and accounts for 11% of its population. It is bordered by the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. Australia is the smallest and lowest-lying human-inhabited continent on Earth. As it is mostly on a single landmass, it is also referred to as an island continent surrounded by oceans.
what is soil profile? A vertical section cutting through the soil showing the different layers of the soil is called a soil profile. Soil profile can be seen by looking at the sides of a recently dug trench or while digging a well or a foundation of a building. Soil has three different layers. Topsoil, subsoil and substratum. Topsoil. It is the most useful part of the soil. It is dark in color because it is rich in minerals and humus. Plant roots also grow in the topsoil. Many living things like insects, worms, bacteria and rodents live in the topsoil. It contains the decayed remains of dead plants and animals which forms humus. Humus makes the topsoil very fertile. Subsoil The layer of soil just below the topsoil is called subsoil. It is lighter in color and has little humus. It is made up of slightly bigger rock particles which makes it harder and more compact. It contains very little living organisms. Substratum The layer of soil just below the subsoil is called the substratum. It mainly consists of partially broken or weathered rocks. These rocks keep breaking from the bedrock which is just below the substratum. It is this bedrock that has produced soil over a long period of time. There are some important climatic factors which affect the soil profile and bring changes in the soil. What are glaciers? Glaciers are massive bodies of flowing ice. They are found in cold regions where snow does not melt. It just piles up and crushes the snow beneath it to form glaciers. Glaciers slowly move downwards, changing the shape of the topography as they go. Glaciers that move downwards carve out U-shaped valleys as they slide. Bits of rocks carried by glaciers collect to form ridge-like mounds called moraines. Above a certain height, snow never melts. This is called the snow line. Glaciers always form above this line. What is the ozone layer? Have you ever wondered why cricketers paint their faces white? Or why your mother insists that you put on sunscreen lotion before stepping out every summer? The answer is UV rays. Ultraviolet or UV rays are harmful sun rays 
that can increase the risk of skin cancer, cataract and harm the immune system. They can also damage terrestrial plant life, single cell organisms and aquatic ecosystems. Life on Earth is protected from the UV rays by a layer in the stratosphere called the ozone layer. Ozone is a gas made up of three oxygen atoms. This layer is just about 3 to 5 millimeters thick. This thinly spread out gas has been protecting life on the Earth's surface from UV rays for billions of years. Our ozone shield is now being deteriorated due to certain man-made chemicals, primarily chlorofluorocarbons CFCs, and nitrogen oxides. CFCs are a group of chemically similar gases used in refrigeration systems, air conditioners, aerosols, solvents and in the production of some types of packaging. Nitrogen oxides are a byproduct of fuel burning, for example, from aircraft exhausts. What is the ozone hole? The ozone hole is not literally a hole, but an area wherein the total ozone amount is less than 220 Dobson units. The ozone hole has steadily grown in size up to 27 million square kilometers. Can we stop the depletion of ozone layer? Yes, we can! All we have to do is to reduce the production of those chemicals that cause the destruction of ozone, like CFCs and nitrogen oxides. So, encourage your parents, relatives and friends to make sure their refrigerators and air conditioners do not have CFCs. Activity Find out the names of scientists who discovered a recurring springtime Antarctic ozone hole. Find out about ozone gas that can be dangerous to our health. Biodiversity Biodiversity is the variety of animals and plants found on this planet, including the geographic locations they are found in. The diversity of species is not evenly distributed throughout the planet because life depends on many factors including geography. For example, tropical regions support more life than polar regions. Plants, animals and climate work together to maintain the balance of nature. They act as nuts, bolts and oil of a perfectly tuned machine. The Pyramid of Nature's Balance Biodiversity is important for sustaining life on Earth because it prevents any one species from throwing the balance of nature out of order. Snakes are not a welcome presence in our lives. So we fear them and try to get rid of them. One of the many things that snakes feed on is rats. If we were to kill all the snakes, we would end up having a terrible rat problem. Biodiversity means maintaining the balance of nature so that no one thing can become too powerful and therefore bad for everyone else. What is sustainability? The word sustainability has many meanings to maintain, support, endure and withstand. It most commonly means maintaining the world we live in. The main idea is that we must act responsibly so that the resources on the planet will be able to support many generations to come. There are a limited amount of resources on Earth which are exploited every day to produce houses, cars, computers and pretty much everything. 
Sustainability means to maintain these resources forever. Our actions have a deep impact on the environment and we need to protect it for the future generations. If you want to figure out if something is sustainable, you should ask yourself the question, can I do this forever? Let's take a look at the product plastic to understand this better. Plastic was introduced in the early 1990s and is a mass-produced item today. We use plastic for everything from food containers to lamps, toys, bottles, bags and much more. Plastic takes millions of years to decompose. So what happens to all this plastic after we finish using it? We end up with a large amount of plastic that is just taking up space on earth. So now if we ask, can I do this forever? The answer is no. Plastic is just one example of unsustainable consumption. Here are a few ways your actions can contribute to sustainability. Lifestyle Your lifestyle is your choice and you can change it. Always carry your own cloth bag when you go to the grocery store. Avoid plastic bags. Fixing If your watch, toy or camera is broken, don't just buy a new one. Try fixing it. Recycle be conscious about the things around you. Maybe you can reuse some of them. Needs versus wants. Before you buy something, ask yourself the question, do I need it or do I want it? Remember, sustainability begins with you. So act locally and think globally.